Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite what? YouTuber who just always changes his titles. Gardner, the Linux gamer. I do do that. I Sometimes I have to test, uh, you know, what titles work best. <laughs> I want to say thank you to my 124 amazingly generous and awesome patrons over on Patreon, uh, without whom this show would not be possible. Uh, I, I got to give a special shout out to Matthew Irvin, one of my top tier Singularity members. Matthew, my dude, your support is truly humbling. I can't believe it has been four years, four years since I made that video. Four years. That's crazy to me. I have been doing this channel for five years and that was within the, that was in the first year of me doing the channel. I think within, you know, somewhere in that time, that's nuts. So that's bonkers to me. And, uh, the fact that, you know, that video is so old now that when I watch it, first of all, I cringe at the, at the terrible, terrible video quality, the poor audio. And uh, some of the things that I said in that video, like I stand behind much of what I said, but that that laptop thing with the Wi-Fi, oh, I don't know, man. Like, oh God, I I had intended it to be an Ethernet uh, cable plugged into the thing, but everyone freaked out about that. And I can understand why. There's no visible Ethernet cable. <laughs> We're moving on because right now I'm going to remake that video because a lot of the things that I said in that video have just aged and you know, they're, they're not necessarily, um, the most accurate depiction of modern day Linux. And so I wanted to hit on this again, and I've come up with actually an additional reason that PCs are better with Linux. And, uh, so let's talk about this, shall we? Number one, Linux is just less of a headache. Once you get past the superficial UI differences between, you know, a Linux desktop and Windows or Mac OS, um, Linux is just easier to use. There are no settings that are hidden and obscured. There's no clandestine menus that like try to prevent you from, um, you know, administering your computer the way you want. There's no, uh, there's no like, UI snap-in components that are only available on the professional version because that's not how Linux rolls. You have control over your computer, you know, and it comes with same defaults. So even if you don't need control over your computer, it works just out of the box. So administering your computer is less of a headache, but also adding new software, uh, hardware support, which I get a lot of flack when I said that hardware support is great on Linux. There are some people who uh, said that it's not. So the last time I had uh, issues with hardware on Linux, it was with this uh, Wacom tablet. And to be quite honest, all I had to do was upgrade my kernel and boom, I had support for the Wacom tablet that, and that was in, uh, I want to say 2016. So it's been four years or I don't, I can't do math. It's been several years since I've had any issue with hardware and I've tried lots of different pieces of hardware, including the Avermedia Live Gamer Portable 2, which is a, an amazingly awesome capture card. It worked out of the box for Linux. No need to do hardware, uh, your kernel upgrades or anything like that. I'm trying to think of other things that have, uh, you know, I, I had one issue with a, with a USB three controller. Um, but like that was before I even had the, the problem with the Wacom tablet. So Linux hardware support is almost flawless. I haven't had problems in years and I've tried a lot of different hardware. And additionally, with hardware support, you don't have to wait for your computer to install device drivers from the internet once you connect them. If it's going to work, it's just going to work when you plug it in, right? And like I said, most of the time, you don't have an issue with it, with it if it's going to work or not. It just works. That's the, one of my favorite things about Linux. And if you end up encountering a piece of hardware that doesn't actually work out of the box, it's really only a... Uh, a kernel update away for it to work. Uh, that's at least been my experience with it. And so generally speaking, Linux is just easier to use from the hardware front, from the computer administration front, from the, from the, just the ease of use, like performance wise, everything is just less of a headache on Linux. Linux has choice. Do you want a desktop environment that gives you ultimate control over the look and feel of how your computer works? Or do you want a graphical front end that's going to resurrect an ancient piece of hardware? Do you want something that feels familiar or do you want a desktop environment that's on the cutting edge of form and function? Or perhaps you don't want a graphical environment at all. Maybe you just want to use a terminal. 
one of the defining features of a Linux based operating system is that you have choice. You get to decide what components you want and which ones you don't. You get to decide when your computer updates rather than having them forced upon you from a third party, right? You get to decide how it looks and feels and you get to decide if you want to make these decisions or not. Like you can just use Linux out of the box the way it comes and it works and it's so nice. That's why choice is so important because you get to decide what your computer does, how it works, how it looks, how it feels. And if you don't want to do that, you can just use the default and, and that's perfectly acceptable. And this kind of leads me to my next point. Linux is open source and that means it's constantly improving. Once upon a time, this is how Linux looked. But nowadays you have so many different options, right? I mean, I'm constantly surprised by the number of people who say to me that they think that Linux is still exclusively a command line, right? And I get that. I mean, the command line really is uh, the most efficient and powerful means of using your computer, but you don't have to use it. Like you don't have to use it at all if you don't want to. I mean, the thing is Linux has GNOME and KDE Plasma and i3 and XFCE and all these other ones that you get to decide which one you use, how much you use it, how it looks. You get to decide all that. And all these things, Linux, uh, the desktop environments, all the free and open source projects that surround Linux and create this amazing ecosystem called the Linux operating system, they're all open source. They're, they're are being developed by passionate and skilled people who apply their trade, not for money, not for fame, but because they are passionate and because they care about what they're doing. Blender, Firefox, VLC, 7-Zip, all of these applications are open source. They're all available on Windows and they're some of the best applications in their class. They're being updated constantly by passionate people who care about what they're doing. Now imagine that your operating system is the same way, right? Being developed by uh, people who care about what they're doing, driven by the ideals of, of performance and building the best software possible, not necessarily driven by the good enough to ship ideals of proprietary software. And that strives to get the most performance and the most bang for your buck out of the hardware that's possible. These ideals and others that I'll get into later are why open source is so awesome and why open source is constantly improving. Linux is safer. Now I know I just made a video about uh, some malware that actually targets Linux specifically. Uh, and that's, you know, that's bound to happen no matter what. Most of the time when someone builds malware, they're not targeting uh, the small Linux community. But even when someone does build malware for Linux or when security vulnerabilities are found, patches are created and, and shipped. And it's a very seamless process. Most of the time, the software that you have uh, comes directly from your distribution maintainer and they will push security updates, especially critical security updates, really quickly. And the thing is, free and open source software is the scientific approach to software development. Um, you have many eyes and many people to audit, peer review and, and develop software and, and fix bugs and find problems and ship solutions. Linux is platform and corporation agnostic. Uh, this is really important. You know, Apple has been pushing silent updates recently that have been uh, removing third-party software and features from the operating system without your consent. They've been disabling third-party applications. And granted, what they were removing had uh, security vulnerabilities in them that exposed like the webcam and the microphone. Um, but really, shouldn't the user be the one making these decisions? Now we can hem and haw about the, the merits of a platform holder like Apple or Microsoft pushing updates that deliberately break user applications in the name of security, right? And we can, you know, uh, we can we can like say, oh, well, you know, I don't mind a little bit of fascism if it means that everything's more secure. But in my mind, you can't have a secure operating system. You can't have a secure environment if there's a backdoor and Apple or Microsoft has a key to it. That's just not how security works. 
Apple and Microsoft and Google, they're all vying for control, whether they say so in their marketing or not. They're, they're pushing updates that are stripping out you know, features that you rely on. They're disabling apps that you've installed. They're killing products that are critical to your workflow, and they're restricting your rights to your device. Linux is so important because there's no single stakeholder. The plethora of Linux distributions out there makes for a healthy and varied ecosystem. And there's so much choice and so much competition that it keeps pretty much everyone honest. Linux is better for gaming. And I know that this is gonna be a controversial one, but I truly believe this. Linux has more native games today than it ever has. It also has the backing of some of the biggest players in the PC gaming space, including Valve, GOG with Galaxy 2 coming out soon for Linux, Humble and Itch and so many other retailers. And while native gaming is great, Valve are developing this awesome technology called Proton that lets you play non-native Windows games on Linux. This, this technology works directly through Steam and it is an incredibly powerful tool that is optimized for video games. It's such a cool technology and, and it's been featured in a ton of different places like mainstream uh, tech outlets like uh, Linus Tech Tips, PC Gamer, even Forbes.com. And there's a ton of community support for Linux gaming, including uh, ProtonDB, which, which lists compatibility of Windows games on Proton, and the PC Gaming Wiki, which helps you get, game, get games running on Linux. Not to mention that a game written in Vulkan generally has better performance on Linux than it does on Windows, even if it's a Windows version of the game running through Proton. I mean, honestly, if you're a PC gamer, Linux is quickly becoming the go-to platform of choice. And lastly, Linux is free. Now there are two definitions of the word free. There's free as in free beer, like at no cost, right? You know, I have a beer, I have a case of beer, I give you one for free, you don't pay for it. But Linux also means freedom. It means that your machine is your machine and no corporate stakeholder has <laughs> revocation rights over your license. On Linux, you have the freedom of choice. Do you wanna encrypt your files or not? Do you wanna use a graphical environment or not? Do you wanna use Ubuntu or Manjaro? The proprietary offerings are slowly chipping away at choice. They're, they're locking down your hardware. They're forcing upgrades you might not want. They're, they're limiting where you can get your software from and they're spying on you. Now, some people might say that proprietary dominance in the software space is inevitable, but I say that that's wrong. That's simply not the case. Freedom is inevitable. Linux is inevitable. Well, I think that's gonna do it for this video. I had a lot of fun making this. Uh, I wanna know what you guys think about uh, the future of Linux. Do you think that it is the future of the PC? Do you think that we're uh, you know, going to regress into a proprietary hellscape? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. If you believe in the work that I do, you can support this show with a monthly contribution over on Patreon or now on LibrePay, which is the free and open source alternative. But no matter what you do, whether you like this video or share it with your friends, don't forget to subscribe to see more from me, the Linux Gamer. And as always, thanks for watching. The thing went out. <laughs>